go ahead and pray. Thanks, Crane. I'm just, Thank we're just sharing on how the Daniel enter into grace and how can we copy from Daniel's example so we too can enter into a place of contentment and abundant provision, right? Which is what God meant when he said that he had caused Daniel to enter into a place of favor and goodwill. And we said one of the things like our sister Beauty said last week was Daniel chose God, right? Daniel 1.8, we say Daniel chose God, right? God is available to all of his creation, right? Whether a man makes it or fails, it's not going to be because of God. Because God is available to all of us, mm. right? It's what we do with the God that is available that will differentiate us in life, right? It's what we mm. do with him, right? If people, nobody will go to hell or heaven because of Jesus. Jesus has already paid the price. <laughs> people will go to heaven or hell because of what they did with the price that was paid, right? In the same instance, God has already chosen everybody. In God's mind, he wants everybody to be saved. So we say every time talking to Israel, I've uh, given you life and death. I want you to choose life. However, I cannot force it on you. You have to make a choice. And you will live with the choice that you make. Daniel chose God. Daniel chose life. That was how he was able to enter into contentment and abundant provision. Right? We see James chapter 4 verse 8 where, God's, where, where the apostle James was telling us, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. Again, we'll look, we look also at the at the man Abel. Abel was another person that entered into a place of grace, a place of contentment, a place of provision. And how did he enter into it? We don't know much about Abel, but this is the record we have of Abel. Cain brought a sacrifice. Abel brought a sacrifice. God accepted Abel's sacrifice, did not have Abel accept. Cain sacrifice. And we don't know the reason why. The specific reason why we don't know. A lot of people have said different things they think is the reason why, but no one knows who is right, who is wrong. The Bible does not tell us specifically what it was that Cain did and what it was that Abel did that he received Cain's offering and did not receive Cain's offering. The only thing we know about the difference between the two offerings was when God came to Cain and told and spoke with him. God said, Cain, why are you feeling sorrowful that I did not receive your offering? Why? Why are you feeling sorrowful? If you have done the right thing, will I not have received it? So what do I tease that Cain did? He did not do the right thing. He did not do the will of God. He did not follow the stipulated standard or way of doing things. Yet he felt offended that God did not receive the sacrifice. Is that not the same as most of us? We, we do things our own way and we're offended that God has not received our sacrifice. We pray, 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 and God has not heard us and we're angry. Have we asked ourselves whether we're praying our right? <laughs> Have we asked ourselves whether we're praying according to the word of God or just our emotion? Because you have fasted for all your life, does not mean that you'll be better than other people. Question, what did God say about the way to make it. Did he say he's by fasting? We cannot box God to a corner. Cain wanted to box God to a corner because God did not receive his offering and he was offended. But God came to him. Why are you offended? If you have done the right thing, will I not have accepted your offering? That's something God is telling us. If whatever we're doing is not working, don't feel offended. Though. First thing is go and find out, am I doing what he said I should do? Am I following what he said I should do? Because if you do what he said you should do, he will accept your offering. He will be there for you, he will fight for you. But if he's not fighting for you, it might be that you're not walking in line with his word. So it is for us to get ourselves to line up to his word. The way we line up to his word, that's when abundant provision will be ours. Because God is faithful. The Bible says even when we are not faithful, God remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. Right? So we need to be careful to do the right thing. Right? And how do we ensure that we do the right thing? That's what God told Joshua in Joshua 1.8. He says, the way you will ensure that I will be with you, because I want to be with you. He came to Joshua and said, I want to be with you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. 
However, the only way to ensure it that I will be with you as I was with Moses is that let the word of God not depart from your mouth. Because you must do the right thing. If you don't do the right thing, you cannot box me to a corner. I will not approve of your own plan. I only approve. I only cause fire to come upon a sacrifice that is done rightly. If you do do the sacrifice rightly, it doesn't matter whether people like it or don't like it or they feel that your God is this or that. I will not cause fire to come upon that which is not right. But let me stop there. Our time is over.